is the second of three videos in this series on Taila Pak Vidi, the traditional method of Ayurvedic herbalized oil preparation. So, now that you've viewed part one, you're familiar with some important terminology, you know the three components which make up an Ayurvedic oil or Siddha Taila, and you know how to combine things in the correct ratios. We can now proceed to describe two more important procedures. One, how to prepare the most common drava dravya, the aqueous component of a siddha taila, the quat, or decoction. And two, how to purify the base oil, in this case sesame oil, before using it. A quat is the most common drava dravya used in the production of a siddha taila. Other drava dravyas used are pure water, milk, curd, buttermilk, sometimes meat juice, and sometimes fresh plant juice. A quath is a type of decoction which is prepared by boiling a quantity of herbal material in water. The reason one even prepares a quath or decoction as opposed to a fanta or hot infusion is to extract into the water the soluble constituents from herbs that are woody, dense, hard, and which have a compressed or compact texture. Uh, these plant tissues are much more easily softened and their principles more easily released by prolonged boiling than by merely steeping them in hot water. Quaths are generally not employed in preparing herbs with active principles which are volatile and would evaporate away, uh, such as Anantmul, Yastimadu, Meti, Ella, and several others. But for many, even the majority of Ayurvedic herbs, quaths are the best way to prepare them for medicinal purposes. The question is, how much herb and how much water? Ayurveda uses what is known as a weight-to-volume method to prepare decoctions and most other preparations involving mixtures of liquids and solids. This means that the quantity of herbal material is measured in metric units of weight, while the quantity of liquid is measured in metric units of volume. To make a quaff, the required weight of raw or dry herbs are put into a vessel of a specific volume of cold water. The water should not be excessively hard, by the way, uh, which is usually the case in well water or spring water because excessive minerals and, or, or limestone will tend to cause precipitation. For Ayurvedic quaths, the volume of water in milliliters or liters is either 4, 8, or 16 times the weight of the herbal material in grams or kilograms. So, for example, if we are using 100 grams of herbal material, our volume of water could be either 400, 800, or 1600 milliliters, depending on the nature of the herbs. The metric unit is used exclusively for these measurements because there is a one-to-one -one equivalence between liters, a volume, and kilograms, a weight, or between milliliters and grams. For all practical purposes, one liter of any liquid we might use weighs about one kilogram, and likewise, one milliliter of any liquid we might use weighs about one gram. The United States centered effort to pour system of weights and measures where volumes are fluid ounces, pints, quarts, gallons, and so forth, and weights are uh, ounces, pounds, etc., doesn't have such a simple parallel. One fluid ounce does not weigh one ounce, but one milliliter does weigh one gram, which is why we always and exclusively use the metric system. Quaths are made by boiling herbal materials in water in an uncovered vessel until the volume is reduced to three-fourths, one-half, or one-fourth of the starting volume. The quantity of the water used and the degree to which the volume is reduced is based on the perceived hardness of the quata dravya, the herbs used to make the quat. Thus, for muridu dravya, herbs of soft texture like leaves or flowers, the starting ratio of herb to water is 1 to 4, and the decoction is reduced to 3 fourths the starting volume, which does not require much time. For madhyama dravya, herbs of intermediate hardness, for example, stem, seeds, soft roots, the herb to water ratio is 1 to 8, and it is reduced to one half the starting volume. And for atyantakatina dravya, extremely hard, roots and outer barks, uh, the herb to water ratio is 1 to 16 and the reduction is weighed down to one-fourth the starting volume, which requires the most time. If the quath consists of a variety of plant parts, we use a ratio based on the hardest substance. Now don't worry about these numbers right now, because there's a nice table which follows to summarize all of this.
For example, if we, wish, if we wish to make 400 milliliters of a 1 to 16 decoction using 100 grams of very hard herbal material, Atianta Catina Dravia, we would simply add 1600 milliliters of cold water to the 100 grams of herb and reduce it by boiling down to 400 milliliters. The water should be brought up to boiling gradually and then maintained at about 95 to 100 degrees Celsius just at or slightly below the boiling point of water. Now the time required to boil and reduce any volume of water depends on several factors. The BTUs generated by the heat source, the surface area of the pot, the altitude where you're working, and the temperatures of both the water and the pot at the start of the procedure. So given that these variables make it quite hard to pre precisely predict volume reduction times, I've discovered over the years that a fairly good, not perfect, but a fairly good rule of thumb for the relatively low heat cooking we require at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, or which is about 205 to 212 Fahrenheit, is that about 450 milliliters of volume reduction will occur per hour. 450 milliliters per hour. So, to reduce 1600 milliliters by 1200 milliliters down to 400 milliliters, we would require approximately, follow the math here, 1200 milliliters, the volume we wish to remove, divided by 450 milliliters per hour, which gives us 2.7 hours, or two hours and 42 minutes. If the herbal material was not extremely hard, but rather of intermediate hardness, madhya madravya, to get the 400 milliliters of required decoction, we'd use a one to eight herb to water ratio. So we'd add 100 grams of herb to 800 milliliters of water and reduce it to 400 milliliters, a one half volume reduction. The boiling time now would be approximately one third of that of the hard material, about 0 0.9 hours or more or less 54 minutes. If the herbal material was of a soft nature, we would require a one to four decoction. So here, to get a final volume of 400 milliliters, we'd need 134 grams of herb. We would add 536 milliliters of water, that's 134 times four, and boil it down to 400 milliliters, a one-fourth volume reduction. The boiling time now would be approximately one-ninth of that of the hard material, or about 0 0.3 hours, which equals about 18 minutes. The decoction is then strained using a muslin or silk cloth to obtain the final quaff. Okay, so to summarize, if the herbal material is softer in nature, mridu or madhya madravya, the starting volume of the water the percent volume reduction, and the boiling time will all be less. So this example of starting with 1600 milliliters to reduce by three-fourths and make 400 milliliters of quaff was just an example to illustrate some relative weights, volumes, and times. In practice, we would follow these same exact principles, but at somewhat larger volumes and weights. As we shall see in part three of this series, when we get to the production of Narayana Tala, our decoction will require a starting volume of 60.8 liters, which will be reduced by three-fourths or by 45.6 liters down to 15.2 liters. This volume reduction will require approximately, more math, 45,600 milliliters, which is 45.6 liters, divided by 450 milliliters per hour of reduction rate, which gives us approximately 100 hours. So get ready.
In a separate procedure, which can be simultaneous, the base oil, usually sesame oil, needs to be purified prior to being used. This process is known as murchina. Both herbalized oils and herbalized ghees require this procedure. The purpose of murchina is to remove any impurities, moisture, malodor, ama, or anything impure from the oil. This process also improves bioavailability and enhances shelf life. The three ingredients required for murchina of sesame oil are 1. Water 2. A specific group of 11 herbs and 3. Raw sesame seed oil from either black or white sesame seeds. The 11 herbs are listed in the official Ayurvedic formulary of India and are shown here in Table 2. To accomplish this purification, the oil must basically be decocted with special herbs. Before adding these herbs, the oil must first be gently heated in an uncovered cast iron or stainless steel pot until all the moisture in the oil evaporates. This particular pot we're using here is cast iron and holds about 30 gallons. The small residual quantity of moisture in the oil is evaporated by heating at 90 to 95 degrees Celsius for about 45 to 60 minutes. Next, a kalka is prepared from the 11 herbs listed in Table 2. Care and time must be taken to incorporate all the herbs into a very homogeneous kalka. The kalka must be ground to a very fine consistency for at least one hour and is then added to the oil with constant stirring. The temperature again remains at 90 to 95 degrees Celsius throughout the entire cooking process. The quantities listed in Table 2 are for the manufacture of 1.536 liters of Merchinita Tiltaila, purified sesame oil. These quantities can be adjusted for any volume of oil using the ratio 1 to 4 to 16 herb to oil to water. For example, the 7.68 liters of sesame oil which we are making, which is five times 1.536, uh, we needed to multiply all quantities by five. This made our one part of herbal kalka equal to 1.89 kilograms, our four parts of sesame oil 7.68 liters, and our 16 parts of water 30.7 liters. After adding the kalka, the 16 parts of water is added, 30.7 liters, and the mixture is very gently simmered at a temperature between 90 and 95 degrees Celsius, about 205 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit, until all the oil has evaporated and Sneha Siddhi Lakshana appears, the four signs of the completion of oil processing, including Ganda Varna Rasapati, achieving the proper smell, color, and taste, Shabda Hinata, no cracking sound when a quantity of oil of kalka is held directly in the fire, Finadgama, the appearance of froth on the surface of the oil, and finally Vartivat Kalka, the ability to roll Kalka into a whip-like shape between the fingers. This can take 10 days or longer depending on the volume of the Merchinita Taila being prepared. Remember, we are evaporating the entire 30.7 liters of water using a relatively low temperature. The simmering takes place during the day, 6 to 10 hours each day, and is stopped for the night. The pot is covered and resumed the next morning. At an average of 450 milliliters per hour evaporated, this requires approximately 68 hours. Well, our murchina, or herbal purification, cooking process has been proceeding nicely now for nine days, and we have successfully achieved the purification of the sesame oil, which we will use to make our Narayana Taila in part three of this video series. The purified sesame oil is then strained, while still warm, through a muslin or silk cloth and allowed to cool.